Hey everybody, welcome back with your boy Beano Mac for another playthrough of WWF Smackdown Just Bring It. Now this is going to be the last of the character unlocks. So this one it's going to be Spike Dudley, the runt of the Dudleys. Uh, once again, if you just want to go through and get the steps really quickly and don't watch the video, that's fine. Everything is going to be posted in the description of what you need to do. This is the only time you're going to actually have to do a tag team, uh, you know, championship run. Uh, I decided to go with Mick Foley in this one. I kind of was running out of guys that I was, that I really enjoyed playing at this point. But now you got to find a partner and I mean, let's be honest, out of everybody you're going to pick here, how is it not going to be Triple H? I theoretically, I probably should have done Stone Cold for this one, but I always, you know, I I think Triple H might be one that's always kind of there. I I don't know if it's Ryan or not, but it would have been cool to do a uh, two-man power trip thing, and you know, just pick anybody who's not already a champion to be your tag team partner. Mick Foley and Triple H, <laughs> what a team! <laughs> Let's go wild. Like there's a dialogue in this game is just so goofy. This one actually got confused for a second. You actually have to just go downstairs and meet your partner. For whatever reason, I, I don't really understand. I, like I said, this game kind of drags things out for some reason. But uh, you're going to do this one. It's going to be a tag team match and going to be all set to go. It's really weird too, I mean, as you, if you pay close attention, uh, Mick Foley, he has actually a different shirt underneath his flannel for uh, the cutscenes, where it's like, I guess, a backstage attire, you could call it. Um, it actually has text on it, but for some reason in his ring attire, they just change it to where, you know, it's just a plain black shirt underneath, I don't know why. And I, it's, why is Jerry Lynn here? Like, I, I hate how they just have random people for like this. I mean, I I get it to a degree, but I wish there would have been something where they would have had an actual, like, you know, a tag team program to the idea. Because now, I mean, Mick Foley and, and Triple H is already a pretty crazy team that probably would have never happened to begin with. But now it's just, it's getting goofy. It just seems like four people randomly put together. It kind of bo it bugs me a little bit. I have kind of OCD for that kind of stuff. But pretty ironic, you know. Mick Foley teaming with the guy who put him in retirement. By the way, um, I, usually I usually recommend a clip to watch. Usually every video. It's just kind of thing that's been going on here. So I guess if I had to pick a clip for you guys check out on this one um i think one of the funniest promos it's probably it hasn't really aged well to a lot of people i'm sure you know makes fun, it's it's like has gay jokes in it but uh, i mean if you're not offended by that kind of stuff i always thought that uh when stephanie mcmahon kurt angle and triple h were all involved in the love triangle uh mick foley when he was commissioner would kind of come out and just rag on you know kurt angle with triple h because you know, people didn't want to really say so. He, Triple H was kind of the face in that whole thing. But, um, you know, a really funny segment is when Kurt Angle, you know, real life, and he won the 1996 Olympics, as I'm sure most of you know. And um, they had the footage of him. <laughs> he actually started crying after winning, which, you know, I'm not, like, making fun of that or anything like that. I mean, that's... To win the Olympics, be the best in the world at freestyle wrestling, that's amazing. I don't blame him. I mean, he had a, he literally had a broken freaking neck. So, I mean, props to the guy. I mean, Kurt Angle is just, he, he isn't human, really. But, you know, obviously the WWE, because it made him look like a dork, you know, made fun of him. And it, it's just a really funny story. <laughs> a really funny segment, I should say. Because then, you know, Triple H and Mick Foley are pretending to cry and all this other stuff and 
making fun of Kurt. It's a really funny one. The weird thing about this too is like I always wonder why was Jerry Lynn in this game of all people? I think I don't even remember him being involved in any match ever really in any meaningful way. Like even someone like Mike Awesome, who you know came in and ran we won the uh, hardcore championship, and then you know I, I forget when he came in, but you know that's I think that's kind of was the full extent of his career at that point. But uh, you know even someone like him just having that one moment I feel like would have made so much more sense you know to include because I think Jerry Lynn was just he was just in uh like metal and jack which was pretty much i guess you could call it the sea shows of the time you know something so far down the, the the card essentially i mean it was just like the jobbers and stuff i mean even heat was a bigger deal at the time which should tell you everything you need to know about how uh you know metal and jacked were as far as tv shows but i guess it gave somewhat you know of a Nobody really watched it, I feel like, but it gives somewhat of a, a chance for, you know, lower card superstars to, to, you know, get some screen time. It's also kind of depressing that, you know, Sky Tohati was in this game. You can kind of, uh, you know, pick. You can create them because uh, they include a Too Cools theme, but... Um, you know, it's still not the same, you know, unfortunately Grandmaster Sexay was, I believe he was caught, um, either taking or selling drugs in, uh, December of 2000, I forget what it was, I'm assuming selling, because, I mean, everybody took drugs at that time, but, um, it, you know, that took out too cool, and I think they were already on the decline at that point anyway, unfortunately, because Rikishi left the group, but, um, it was just sad to... That, you know, to see what was actually once an extremely popular group just kind of fade into obscurity. Actually, I think Grandmaster Sex Day, he teamed with Steve Blackman near the end of his run for, like, that kind of odd couple tag team that, uh, similar to, like, Head Cheese, if anybody remembers Steve Blackman teaming with Al Snow. I actually kind of liked, uh, that team. I liked Steve Blackman. Not the, definitely not Mr. Personality, but it was always funny when they tried to, they put him in these awkward situations. But as you can see, our uh, opponents for this run, our main antagonist. What the hell is Undertaker doing with his mouth? <laughs> Did anybody see that? But yeah, our main antagonists are uh, the tag team champions in this game. Kane and Undertaker, the Brothers of Destruction. One of the coolest tag teams, in my opinion, ever. And uh, pretty much ignore everything that Michael Cole is saying. Because, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be the end result. But I actually almost messed up on this one. So uh, when it comes to this uh, decision, you're going to want to just have your partner find, you know, the third member of your team. I actually almost messed up. But um, thankfully, it gave me another option of just saying, you know, letting him have it. Ew. Are you saying you can't trust me? Uh, go find your own partner in the boiler room, man. Uh. This team can't be effective if we don't trust each other. Yeah, it's one of those things that you have to you trust your partner to find a partner. Yeah, sorry for those terrible impersonations. <laughs> I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a good impersonator. For some reason, you start outside the arena for this one, but you're going to want to head back in, and you're going to want to head into the corridor where the office is. And then you'll see this scene. Or I guess I should say, I think both of them have an office. The one that has, like, the dressing rooms, to be more specific, towards your left when you enter in the building. Now, see, this is something, you know, once again, it's sad. People don't really talk about this stuff much, but... Even though it was a mid-card feud, this was a really big, you know, uh, storyline at the time that people were really getting invested in. Oh, man. 
<laughs> the way they entered is just so crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so like they're both talking and they're arguing, but really it's just Baba that's kind of talking right now. So you're going to obviously want to help these guys out to get Spike Dudley for the storyline. The Dudleys were pretty intimidating back in the day. I mean, they're still pretty cool and everything, but they had this presence about them that was just kind of really intimidating, especially Baba. You know, he, he was just really intense with that kind of stuff. Although, I mean, I, if we're being honest, him power bombing girls to get uh, sexual pleasure, essentially. Uh, I think it was JR, every time it happened, he would, you know, Bubba Ray would just stare off into the distance, kind of zoned out, and JR on commentary would say, Isn't that euphoric triance, damn it? What the hell were you thinking? Uh, I don't even know if I sound like Triple H. I, <laughs> of course, I don't sound like him, but you know that was kind of the joke at the time. It actually took me. This match can be like you know five seconds long, but it took me way too long to be able to beat this. And like it took me, I think like four tries. And as you can, you're about to see, it wasn't even me. I just I don't know why I could not get them to line up on the table properly. And even when I did, it just didn't do the usual animation. Like, I kept falling off. But thankfully, Triple H, you know, was tired of my bullshit. So he, he did went and did himself. And yeah, you know, now your supporters are Mike and... Mike, Spike and Molly. And then you just have to beat Kane and Undertaker, or whoever the tag team champions are, to officially, you know, end the run. This time we got SummerSlam. I think it's usually just a random pay-per-view. Of course, these guys got to talk trash while they're in the ring. Yeah, I can't imagine Kane even saying <laughs> any of this stuff. Now this one I also actually lost in initially because I mean the tag team matches in these old SmackDown games are just awful in my opinion. It felt like no matter what, I'm sure I know that like you know the strategy is supposed to be, um, you know, beat your opponent down and then quickly knock the other guy off the apron to get a pin. But I mean your your partner is nine times out of ten he's not gonna make sure the pin doesn't get broken up. Um, the targeting system in this game, as you can see, I just keep <laughs> hitting poor Earl Hebner now. I cannot. It's just so bad. You know, you had to press the button like four times to get who you're to who you need to, and if you over press it, you can't just hit a direction again. At least in my knowledge. And you know, you can look at the ref in this. You can look at your partner for whatever reason. It's just so. It's so aggravating. By the time this was over with i was just i was done i was ready to to be finished with this game because tag team matches in these early smackdown games were, were not my my thing not my jam as you could say also um just out of curiosity for feeling like you want to comment something why don't you comment what you guys think this tag team name should be between Mick Foley and Triple H. Damn it, he kicked out. Yeah, at this point, I was just kind of okay. I'm going to go for like some missions to try and beat him. Because, I mean, the submission system, once again, I mean, I I hate to rag on these old games. And it's a fun time. Honestly, I still played it after this point, as you're going to see next week. But um, the submission system, you just don't know what's going on. I mean, you get them a submission, you know, 20 submissions until they eventually tap. So, I mean, there's still, it's going to be a bit of a long one on this one. Just because I can't 
otherwise beat this guy, you know, Kane. And of course, I had to keep him from not tagging out as well. And for some reason, um, I don't know why. I feel like they, unless if it's just a move that I didn't figure out, I feel like they took out the Man of a Claw for McFoley in this game. Like he has his, uh, you know, trademark double arm DET, and the Spike Pile Driver was a staple of like Cactus Jack, of course. But um, you know, yeah, for some reason they just didn't give him the. Uh, the Mandible Claw in this, which I always found to be strange. <laughs> I don't even know why I just taunted like that. I think it was probably me pressing the wrong button. I think I meant to hit him with a finisher. That was me testing to see if I could get the, the Mandible Claw. And as you can see, what that's my point exactly. You know, Triple H, there's no reason why he shouldn't have broken that up. And this was still at the time where, you know, people didn't stay down when, in these SmackDown games. So there was so little time to actually, you know, hit somebody with a finisher, knock somebody off, and then go for a pin afterwards. So, I mean, tag team matches, it's a good thing that uh, this is kind of the only storyline where you have to, you know, do tag team matches to progress. Because, I mean, I was just... It's just not very entertaining to uh, play, in my opinion, as much as single matches or battle royals, anyway. Yeah, see, even there, I had to just kind of, thankfully, I got lucky with that one. You know, the reversal put me in the right spot to where I could just kind of block him. Which, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. But they only tag out from the looks of it when uh, your partner is extending their hand. I tried to do in the last match, have it where Triple H would finish the match while I beat up Kane the whole time on the outside. But for whatever reason, um, Triple H just did not go for the pen. He hit him with the pedigree. You know, I helped him out at times when I, you know, he needed and he was getting beaten up. But even though Undertaker should have been done, you know, it took way too long. So eventually I lost because Triple H is going to break up the cover on me after a choke slam. But as you can see, we eventually got there. But with that, it's going to be the end of the video today. So like, subscribe for more daily content. Ring the bell to be notified of that daily content. And do me a favor today, if you could, comment your favorite Attitude Era tag team. I know I did a poll on this a while back, but I do like to engage with you guys and talk about this old style of wrestling because, you know, a lot of people like to talk about modern wrestling these days. So it's always good to engage and comment and hear people's opinions of what things were, you know, probably well over 20 years ago at this point. So, you know, thanks again for watching and remember to have a nice day.